All right, well, welcome to part two of Money and Banking here. Uh, so what exactly are the services provided by banks? Well, one thing is that it enables, it gives customers a place where they can store money. Just imagine a world where there was no bank and everyone had to keep all of their assets in cash. Um, you know, if, if I had you in class in front of me, I would say, what could go wrong? And, you know, we, and uh, hopefully one of you would come up with the thought of, well, what could go wrong is it would be an awful lot of incentive to rob people if you knew that they had, you know, uh, all of their life savings in cash on the property, right? So it would be, you know, keeping that much money is actually very, you know, unsafe in a lot of ways. You, I mean, you would have, you know, we see these gated communities with these really rich people where, you know, they, they you know, have so much stuff that they have to add all these extra layers of security to keep people from robbing them. But imagine if everybody... Uh, had had to basically gate their houses over, over that. That's basically the world you would live in if there was no place for people to take their, their cash. If it was common knowledge that everyone's entire uh, money supply was in their homes, um, whew, uh, you know, it would be kind of dangerous. So the thing about a bank is a bank is a good, safe, and usually secure storage place. Now, you get people of a certain generation that lived through the Depression. I guess they're mainly going to be with uh, hopefully with the Lord, uh, right now, <laughs> some of them weren't, uh, unfortunately, but, um, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, a lot of them, you know, have this deep distrust of banks because of what happened in the 30s, but typically, uh, you know, you, you look at a bank as a pretty safe place to put your money, you know, and, um, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you know, banks may get robbed from time to time, but normally they've got really strong security measures, and, and you know, and they can uh, only make off of so much. And even then, now you've got FDIC backing that up in the event something like that happens. You know, so uh, so it's kind of considered a safe place to store money. The second thing is it's a way for customers to earn money because by loaning your money to the bank, either in a savings account or in a CD uh, or in you know some of these other. Uh, other ways by having your money on hand in savings in the bank they start to pay out interest payments over time uh and uh you know and typically they're low yield interest payments uh it's you know it's a uh you know putting putting your money in the you know in the bank is a low risk low yield investment but it's also the safest one right so you know, you're not going to get like exorbitantly wealthy over keeping your money in the bank but it's also guaranteed that you're going to make money whereas in stocks you know, you could get wealthy off of them, but you also could go bankrupt off of them. You know, putting your money in a, you know, in a CD or something like that, you know you're only going to get but so much improvement, but you know you're going to get improvement. Um, so, uh, and there are certain types of uh, uh, bank accounts that offer higher levels of interest. We'll, we'll look at that uh, more in the next section on investment. Um, the other thing is customers can borrow money from banks. So, you know, very, very few people are able to pay cash for a home. Uh, a few more people are able to pay cash for cars, but a lot of people aren't able to do that either. Um, you know, very few people can start a business with their own money unless they, you know, really came from pre-existing money or had already succeeded in business themselves. So, uh, banks are very important to the financial system in the fact that they provide an engine for growth through uh, through business loans, as well as, uh, you know, for funding the real estate industry through home loans uh, and land loans, uh, and, you know, the automotive industry through auto loans. So, um, so the most common, one of the most common types of loan is the mortgage, which is uh, a mortgage loan allows a buyer to purchase a real estate property without paying the entire value up front. Um, and so, you know, people pay a monthly fee, uh, sometimes for 15 years, most commonly for 30 years. If you take the, just the standard, um, if you take just the standard mortgage, uh, and if you're credited and at a certain place, they'll require you to take this arrangement, uh, you know, you'll be paying, uh, paying that back for 30 years, which is a very long time. Um, you know, and, and really, um, and if at any given point in that 30 years you miss a payment, uh, you know, they can take it back. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can, you can cut that down a little bit if you make extra payments and so on, but a lot of people aren't in position to do that. It's, it's wise to do it if you are. Um, and obviously the shorter, the shorter the mortgage the less money you're going to burn in interest because literally every day that the money's loaned, interest accrues. Uh, and so, um, you know, you'll pay just about twice as much 
interest on a 30-year mortgage as you would over a 15-year mortgage. The difference is, though, that a 15, you're going to have a much higher monthly rate. Uh, and so that may not be safe for you depending on your income level. Um, and in this case, the real estate, in the case of a mortgage, the real estate acts as collateral, meaning, so collateral is in a trade. If I've loaned you money, uh, a lot of times I'll take something what's called collateral, and uh, if you don't pay the money back, I get to keep the collateral. So the way mortgages are set up, the real estate or the, the house becomes the collateral, uh, and you know if you don't pay back, you know, um, you know, like you know, like I borrowed you know ninety thousand from the bank to buy my house. Well, I don't have ninety. I did not have ninety thousand dollars sitting around that I could spend on it, right? So, uh, you know, so I borrowed ninety thousand from the bank, uh, and then you know I'm paying them back around about six hundred bucks a month. A lot of that is going to be you know interest or whatever. And if at any point I stop giving them that 600 a month, well, they've got the house. The house is in my name. Legally, it belongs to me. I can sell it, but they've got to lean on it to where uh, or in, or it's collateralized in such a way that if at any point I stop paying their, their, their 9000 plus interest back uh, in those payments, you know, they can say, you know what, well, we're going to take the house away. And so even though right now it's legally mine, I can do with it what I want, uh, but at the same time, it's collateralized, and if I stop making those payments, you know, this house is going to come into, uh, you know, the possession of the bank, and they'll auction it off or whatever. So, uh, you know, so that's kind of how the, the whole home mortgage things work. Um, it may not seem like it to you, but when if you use a credit card, uh, that's also a loan, too. So credit cards are issued by banks to users who are, in effect, borrowers. This is why credit cards can be very, very dangerous. Um, if if uh, there are a lot of people who are really messed up because they spent too much money on their credit cards, you want to be very, very cautious. Uh, treat that thing like it's hot. Uh, you don't you don't want to mess around with it if you don't have to. Um, it's good to like uh, you know. I was told when I was in the process of trying to build up my credit to be able to get a home loan. You know, I was told it's great to go use your credit card like once a month for like a small purchase and then pay it off immediately and just show that you can pay it off to raise up your credit score. So it's good to have credit cards so that you can do that. Uh, it's not good to use them in such a way that you're carrying a balance from month to month. Uh, that becomes very, very dangerous because every time you carry a balance, you start adding interest payments to it. Uh, and all of a sudden, um, you know, you're throwing away money on interest uh, and, you're, um, uh, and you're building up a total of debt that you don't have the capacity to pay back or else you would have already done it so uh, you know be very very cautious with credit cards so um, so credit cards though uh, you know if you use a credit card uh, it's because you can't pay for the whole thing up front uh, and so then the idea is you know you'll pay the bank back uh, over time through your credit card payment and your credit card typically will have a minimum monthly payment uh, that will depend on how much you have borrowed um, and, 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 you know, uh, it may, uh, it may even draft automatically, uh, out of your account if, if you've got it set up like that. Um, so you, you've got a minimum payment that's going to come in and then, you know, hopefully you would pay, you know, above that, um, if at all possible. So when you pay the bank back, you're repaying a loan. And if you don't pay it back within a month, you actually are going to give, uh, interest money to the bank. Uh, so, uh, the Banking Act of 1993 tightly regulated the amount of interest that banks could pay on deposits and charge loans. Uh, excuse me, it was 33, but deregulation in the 80s and 90s ended those restrictions and caused a bunch of changes. Uh, one thing that happened um, that has been a major change in banking has been the rise of bank mergers. You notice banks merge a lot, uh, and there are now a lot fewer uh nationwide banks than there used to be um, you know but it's, it's by 2004 Bank of America and JP Morgan Chase uh, had become two of the largest banks in the US and each of them had around one trillion dollars in assets uh, that's a lot that's a lot of money to have on hand um, uh, also uh, kind of banking services changed uh, they made it a little bit easier for banks to kind of do all of those things. Um, 
Uh, some there's a lot of dispute as to how much uh, banking deregulation caused the financial crisis of 2008 that affected uh, people of you know my age bracket pretty pretty severely. Um, there's some evidence. Uh, that will be presented that, it, that deregulation was the cause of it. There's also some evidence that you could present to say that actually heavy-handed regulation caused it in some ways because uh, the, the root of that financial crisis was that uh, banks had started playing around. They had started playing around with using mortgages as assets to back uh, securities. And so as their... Uh, this stuff is hard to explain because honestly, it's a little hard for me to understand because it's so ethereal. Um, you know, because they're really they're treating money as though it was almost a not real thing <laughs> in some in some ways. Uh, you know, but they they basically they started selling off people's mortgages uh, to other banks to back uh, securities and bonds that they were selling. So they were. You know, so banks were trading amongst each other, like collateralizing people's mortgages as the collateral. You know, and so and and I actually had that happen with one of my student loans, where you know my student loan disappeared from the bank I borrowed it from and became uh, both started the loan started belonging to another one. I'm like, wait a second, why am I paying you back? I didn't borrow from you, but they had sold my debt. It, was, it's, it got really complicated. So, um, so because. Uh, of the, this new innovation of backing these these securities with mortgages, uh, it kind of inspired banks to give out mortgages that they really probably shouldn't have, but that, that seemed to be high likelihood of foreclosure. But this was also, and so some people say, you know, and, and ultimately uh, this is what causes the home market to, you know, tank, and, and the crash of the real estate market is really the the thing that uh, really drove the economy into the ground in 08. I'm sorry, my foot is itching terribly, and I just have to scratch it. Uh, so, the uh, uh, so it's a really complicated thing. I don't need to go too too deep into it. But there is some evidence too that that was partially partly government coerced as well, because uh, you know the government also had passed laws that had. Uh, made it uh, much easier for people who weren't really truly in position to buy homes to get loans, uh, even though they were much more likely to default on them. So the state had a hand in it as well as maybe some areas that were, there may have been some areas that were too deregulated. There were other areas where regulation uh, had a role in it, and that's kind of a hot topic among economists, you know, uh, what percentage uh, each side bears, but uh, everybody had a little bit of responsibility for uh, for that financial crisis. Um, so a couple other things about uh, banking. Um, a couple technologies they use is the automated teller machine or the ATM. I'm, you know, many of you probably already have a bank account and have used these. If not, you've seen your parents, but this is where um, automated teller machines are. The teller is the person at the bank that, that you know handles the work at the counter or whatever. So the ATM is where you just walk up and you stick in a debit card and then you can pull cash out or put cash in. Um, and a lot of times, uh, you know, you have to deposit money at your own ATM, but you can a lot of times uh, withdraw money from another bank's ATM uh, with a, in exchange for a fee. Uh, debit cards, some of you probably already have, uh, are cards that can be used like an ATM card to withdraw cash or to make cash-like purchases. You know, if you pay with your card at the grocery store, you haven't done anything different than if you had paid in cash or with a check. Uh, now, if you pay with a credit card, that's different because you've, you know, if you pay for your groceries with a credit card, you've taken a loan uh, to pay for those groceries. And if you don't pay it back, you owe interest. But a debit card is literally the same as using cash. Um, There's a lot more banking that you can do online now than it used to be, and I don't really need to cover that in the course here, I don't think. Uh, okay, so that's the chapter on banking. Uh, that's chapter 10. Uh, we'll come back uh, tomorrow, and we'll look at uh, chapter 11. Hopefully not chapter 11 bankruptcy, which means you're going broke. Okay, uh, y'all have a good one. Talk to you later.